YouTube, what's going on? It's your boy Sergi J in 4K. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you for stopping by. Today I did want to go ahead and we're going to discuss, we finally, finally got our first hands on with the Sony DualSense Edge controllers. I'm going to go ahead and let you know what I think from the hands on that I've seen so far. Let's go. All right, so yeah, as I mentioned, we finally got our first hands on review with the DualSense Edge. I myself, unfortunately, was not lucky enough to be sent one or sent out. I guess they had an event that they did. I don't know if anyone actually got sent one, but I didn't go to the event myself. So <clears throat> the reviews that I've seen are pretty much going off of basically other YouTubers and stuff and just other, you know, game websites, tech websites. And a few things popped into mind. Again, I mainly, I do have a PlayStation 5, but I don't really, if, you know, if I do end up down the line reviewing this controller, I don't intend on actually using this on the ps5 most of my gaming is done on a pc so i'll be looking at this from a pc stand uh, stand point of point of view should i say <laughs> so number one and i know I, i've seen a lot of reviews on or not a lot of reviews but just a lot of articles a lot of complaints about this is that the battery life from what we're being told is going to be a lot less than the standard not a lot less but it's going to be less than the standard ps5 dual sense now, if you're using this controller wirelessly, <clears throat> again, um, from a point of view from PC, I normally just play with the cable hooked up all, all the time. But from a wireless standpoint, that does suck. <laughs> Why? Um, in, in my opinion, because any time that I have used the DualSense controllers for my PS5, the battery life on those controllers already isn't that good, in my opinion. Battery life, if you're, if you're a, like a heavy gamer or you plan on using it all day, the battery life isn't that good, so the fact that they're already lowering it on this controller, that part definitely sucks. That I could tell you is a big concern for console players because obviously you don't want to you know, keep it charged. It kind of make, you know, pretty much defeats the purpose of a wireless controller for console players because you know we don't always have the ability to have a cord long enough to where you're plugged in at all times. With a PC, different story. Normally your PC is not too far away from you. So I mean, that's why to me that's not as much of a concern, but I do agree with everybody who's brought up that. It is a valid point. Number two, and this is obviously something that pertains to everybody, is that they did mention that obviously you can remove the joysticks on those because it's like a like a modular unit. Definitely cool, but I had and you can look at you know my previous review as far as why I canceled my pre-order, and a lot of people have been mentioning in there that they didn't really change any of the mechanics to the actual joysticks. So even though you can replace the joystick, it seems like you'll still, if you're a heavy gamer, which let's be honest, most of you watching this probably are heavy gamers if you're looking at a pro style controller, nothing wrong with that. <laughs> but if you're a heavy gamer and you plan on using this a lot, it sounds like you'll be having to replace those joysticks pretty often. Now, I think they're what, 10 to 20 bucks. So I mean, not too bad, but if you do start to buy many of them, it is going to add up. That part, you know, I could tell you that part definitely sucks, um, you know, because obviously stick drift is a real issue with the original PS5 controller. Uh, mine already has it on the original one. I have had my PS5 since day one. So, I mean, at this point, we're looking at well over two years. And that's from light gaming. It's not really from heavy gaming. So, I mean, if you're a heavy gamer, you're going to notice that a lot more. Um, and yeah, I mean, yeah, you could be, buy a replacement rather than buy a whole new controller. But again, if you're going to have to buy multiple of those, that part does suck because you're going to have to replace them fairly often. Now, I guess you can argue that, yes, it's still a lot cheaper than replacing the whole controller, like if you would have that issue like on a scuff or a battle beaver. But again, um, just speaking from my personal experience, I have not had that issue with any of the scuff controllers that I own. And I own two of the DualSense models, um, you know, that, that you see in one of my previous videos. You'll see the clip. You'll see that those are the ones I own. So real concern, um, something that's unfortunately for a pro controller, and that's a feature that they're touting as being great. I agree that it's a great feature, but come on, at least give us... Uh, you know, a different joystick that isn't susceptible to that as much. Personal opinion, let me know if you agree. And then again, the last thing um, that I see that, I mean, it kind of sucks. <laughs> again, I, I know some people have been laughing, saying that I may have like eight fingers or something in my last video, whatever. I'm not mad about that, but is the paddles, the paddles just seem weird. I mean, you only, you get two of them, whatever. We've been over that in the previous video. But the paddle styles that they give you are strange. They give you one that is the standard paddle, kind of like the scuff here that I have here. So you have this one here to where it's basically, you have the two or the four on this one. Whereas on that one, you'll get the two, but then they also give you like a, just like button ones, I guess, which are, eh, I mean, you know, teach their own. I don't think that I would like reaching for those. That's kind of a pain. 
I mean, to each their own. If you if you prefer a controller like that, then that's kind of cool. But I myself, I saw that as being an issue because again, you know, it's just it's something that I don't know. It doesn't really stand out to me. <laughs> now, ultimately, I mean, I'm reading things, and these are just early hands-ons from people that probably only had access to them for a few hours. We're still waiting to see hands-on at someone at, at home for you know a long period of time. If you want me when this comes out next month, January, if you're watching this in December when it drops, December 2022, if you want me to do a hands-on review, let me know in the comment section because, I, I mean, if you guys want it, I will do it. If not, we can do other videos on other products. But ultimately, again, I mean, looking at the initial hands-on, I can tell you I'm glad I canceled monitor. I don't see anything here that I would see as a standout feature that makes me want this controller, primarily as a PC player. Now, again... If you guys want me, if you want me to review it, do the hands-on unboxing. I can do that for you guys. Let me know, comment section. Also, if you haven't subscribed, if you haven't liked this video already, feel free to do so as well. This is just really a quick update I wanted to drop for you guys because I know a lot of people have been interested in that video and my previous controller videos. So keep in mind, we do have more coming in the future. 2023, I have big plans. So I do thank you for watching. But until then, guys, have a happy holidays. Have a happy New Year's. This is your boy Sergi J, and I'm checking out.